Welcome to Excel 2010 Statistics video number seven. Hey, if you want to download this workbook and follow along, click on the link below the video. Hey, we're going to start on the sheet charts three. And what are we going to do in this video? We're going to talk about charts. We're actually going to look at a pie chart, a column chart, a bar chart, two charts in one. And then over on sheet number four, we'll talk about a line and XY scatter. Now, why do we have charts? Well, if you have data like this, this is just a small data set. When we come over here, we have a little bit bigger data set, and over here, even bigger. We have a bunch of raw data. And as we talked in the last few videos, right, we have take raw data and we convert it into useful information. That's data analysis. And in this class, we do statistical and data analysis. But here's the deal. A chart, if you go over here, and look, a chart has a visual, immediate visual impact. You're taking these numbers here and showing a picture. And sometimes a picture can tell a thousand words, right? We can immediately see that the purple one's the biggest. We can immediately see that the purple one's the tallest, the longest. Over here, we can immediately see the trend. Wow, it's kind of up and down, up and down. But at the end, in this last little bit, it's, it's really zooming. Here, when we do an XY scatter, we can see the points are scattered all over the place. But as this variable increases, this one tends to increase, right? So the whole point of charts is to show visually something immediate, right? or uh, detect some sort of pattern visually that it's really hard to get from the numbers. All right, so let's do some charts. Remember, this week uh, one, we're doing Excel basics. Later in the book, we'll, chapter two is like mostly, or at least half, nothing but charts. All right, let's start with a pie chart. Why do we use a pie chart? Compare parts to the whole. Oh, by the way, this is our downloaded workbook. Also at our site, I actually have uh, one extra handout in uh, our first week. It's an excerpt from the book I wrote about Excel, and it just goes over the basics of what a pie chart is, what a column chart is. It's, it's about three pages or something. All right, in essence, why do we have pie? To compare the parts to the whole. Here it is. We have these sales. When we add them all up, down here using the sum function, right? You don't need to do that for this, but there's the total. And in fact, I'm going to delete that because you don't want to include the total in the chart. But individual parts compared to the total will give us some sort of proportion or percentage. And that's why you use a pie chart. You want to show the individual parts compared to the total. All right, these are categories, quarter one, quarter two, quarter three, quarter four. These are the numbers. Always have some label at the top. Highlight the table. Your categories should always be to the left when you're doing uh, charts in Excel. It's possible to do something else, but it's more helpful if they're to the left. Go to Insert. Ah, and there are the charts. We're going to go to Pi. Rule number one about Pi, never use 3D. And I'm always amazed through the years of teaching classes how many textbooks suggest that people use pie charts. The reason is simple. When you're talking about percentages or proportions, anytime you tilt a pie on its side, you have distorted the proportions. All right, so we're always going to use flat ones, right? So I'm just going to click on this. Hey, that's pretty good. Now. Uh, we can size a chart by pointing to the edge, and when you see a, that little diagonal cursor, you can click and drag. Uh, we're going to do a few things to this. We're going to add some uh, percentages and stuff like that, which is pretty much automatic. I'm going to click on this. This is the legend. Some charts legends are good. Here, I don't want them. So you click on it, and what's the keyboard shortcut for delete? Delete. Now, let's give this a better title. I'm going to click on here, and in 2007 and 2010 Excel, it's a little tr deceiving how to um, change the chart title. The way I like to do it is I like to, once I click and see the solid line, I click up here and type sales 2010. Now there are a few other ways to do it, but I'm going to do it that way, especially since later we'll see how to link titles and labels to cells, and it's always handy to use the formula bar for that. All right, so we changed the title. That's good. Now, let's add some 
percentages. Now here are some context sensitive ribbons. Notice the chart is selected. If I click here, they go away. I select the chart, there they are. Design, we'll come back and use that, some of these later, but layout. We're going to do a lot of labels, both axis labels and data labels. This chart doesn't have any <laughs> axis like an XY scatter, so we're going to use in the labels group data labels. Now usually there's some options here, but I always like to come down to the bottom because here's all the options. More data label options. Boop. All right, now immediately you could see it puts the values. I'm going to put the category name. Remember category, that's the the name for each one of those numbers. There it is. I don't we can leave the numbers or not. I'm going to click percentages. Now we can see the percentages. That's a little busy. Maybe for this chart, all we want is an immediate visual impact with an indication of what category it is and what um, percentage it is. So I'm going to uncheck value. So that's what nice, what's nice about this dialog box. You can uncheck and check whatever you want. Click close. Now let's click out here, and I want to show you how to change chart elements. Now when you click on a certain chart element. Notice if there's more than one, they're all highlighted. If you want to do something to just one of them, you click on it a second time. And now you can see that one is just selected. In fact, you could do anything. You could um, go up to the format and do all sorts of formatting just for that label, or up to the home and do some formatting just for that. We're not going to do that. We're simply going to point to the outside edge. Now, moving things in Excel always is that cursor right there, whether it's a chart or a label or even a cell if you want to move it. So when you see that cursor, four-way error cursor, click and drag. And now you do that to each one. That one's hard to get. Now, formatting. Uh, chart elements, and we're going to make about five or six charts here, and each time we're going to format. I'm going to click on the pie. The same rule applies if I wanted to format one piece of the pie, I'd click once and then a second time uh, just a moment later. I don't really want that. I want to select them all, make sure they're all selected. Now we can right click format elements, whether it's a label or the, the series numbers here, or later the axis, axes, and it will always say format something. Now in this case it says format data series, that's the actual numbers. That little icon will always uh, appear for the formatting of whatever it is you have right clicked. Now you can do that, click, and this will open. It says format data series. I'm going to click escape. I'm going to use a keyboard shortcut. Control 1. Now we already saw the Control 1 in our number format video. If I Control 1 on a cell, it opens up format cells. If I'm in a chart, Control 1 opens up format whatever the thing is. In this case, it was data series, meaning data means the numbers, series is the, the name they always use for numbers. I just want to see if we can rotate it. You can actually rotate it. You can see as we slide this, it changes over there. I'm going to leave it right about like that, and then click Close. I'm going to pull these out. All right, so that's just a little bit about Pi. Now I'm going to move this. I'm going to use my Move cursor right there, and I'm going to drag it down here. Now a column. Column compares numbers across categories. See we have some category sales rep. Here's some numbers. A column is vertical, so it'll show us a vertical bar. Now notice in this field name in essence here, it said sales. And then when we got our chart, it had that field name there, but we had to then edit it and change it to 2010. So in this one, I was smart right off the bat. I said, forget that. I know that that label or field name above the numbers is going to show up as the chart title. So I'm going to just type sales 2010 there. Now, same thing. Uh, the field names are column headers at the top, uh, data, the data below, insert column. Now I have to warn you, and I have a big warning right here, the book, this textbook, it's an awesome statistics textbook, but they for some reason 
call and statistics does it. They call this a bar chart. Well, the, in Excel, columns are vertical, bars are horizontal. So here we are, we're using the statistics book and we're using Excel. And I, the authors are really good with st um, Excel and uh, I wish they'd put a note in there, but don't get confused when in this class, since we're using Excel and since you know if I have a test or something, I will specifically say column or bar. And when I say bar, I mean horizontal. When I say column, I mean vertical. All right, so I'm going to select this one. Wow, that's pretty cool there. Now we can clean this up a little bit. I don't need this legend here, so I'm going to use the keyboard shortcut for delete, delete. The label's just fine. I'm actually going to click on these lines. I don't really want them. How about delete? Whoops. <laughs> I almost made the cardinal sin. Notice the little white balls and boxes around the outside. I really wanted to click on the inside line. Now I have all these lines. I'm going to hit delete. I'm going to come over here on the vertical axis and hit the delete key. Now I'm going to click on the columns. And notice when I click once, they're all selected. Control 1. Notice it says Format Data Series up there. I'm going to go to Fill. And I like this little option, Vary Colors by Point. You could actually do all sorts of fancy things with uh, the, the fill. However, some of it turns out to be you know, busyness and chart junk you don't really need. I'm going to click Close. One final thing for this chart, I'm going to go back up to my Chart Tools, Context Sensitive Ribbons, Layout, Data Labels. And now we could come down here. I see one right off the bat outside in, so I'm just going to click it. That's looking pretty good. Now, this column chart, categories, we're comparing numbers across categories. You can immediately visually see, whoa, Joe has the smallest. That's why we make charts, the vis immediate visual impact. Now, this is a column. I want to show you how to make a bar. Now, I have the same numbers over here, and even have a note, right? Uh, columns compare numbers across categories. So does a bar, compares numbers across categories, except for uh, bars tend to emphasize the differences uh, more forcefully, and it's because they're orientated horizontally. All right, now I've got to show you a trick here. Instead of creating this whole chart from scratch, because we did a bunch of things, right, deleted stuff and added stuff, if you click on the edge here, I want to copy. The keyboard shortcut for copy is Control-C. Now, very carefully, I'm going to drag this out of the way. And do not have the, select, the chart selected when you paste it, because it will try to paste it inside of there. You want to click in a cell. And now, Control-V. Oh, wait a second. I thought we were going to make a bar. Here's what we're going to do. You either select the chart, go up to Design, Change Chart Type, or you can right click change series chart type. I like change series chart type because sometimes you may have a bunch of series and you want to change a particular one. I mean selecting it and, and right clicking. Let's change this to bar. Come down here, select that one, click OK. All right, pretty nice. Um, bars tend to emphasize the differences. Wow, look at that. Oh, Joe is so far behind. Now, these are kind of hanging out over the edge. I don't think I really like that. So I'm going to go, You can. we can do it two ways. Go up to Layout, back up to Data Labels, and say Inside End or something, or even go down here. But watch this. You can also click on these, Control-1, because we're formatting it. And notice the label up here. It says Format Data Labels. I'm going to say Inside End. All right, so there's a bar. That's kind of cool there. Notice by deleting the lines and the uh, axis and putting the numbers inside, it's just less busy. Charting is all about articulating your message with the minimal amount of stuff. If you have too, too much stuff, it gets too busy. The technical term is chart junk. Now, something I've neglected to show you so far, there's a, or maybe I did it in the first video and I forgot, but 
sometimes you want to zoom in and zoom out just on the screen it has nothing to do with printing you can use this scroll arrow down here or you can hold control and roll your wheel on your mouse so now I have these little charts here I'm rolling maybe I want to put it like right below here or something All right. now one last chart on this sheet two charts in one notice we have uh, actually that's quarter revenue and expenses if only I could spell now what I want to do is I want to make a column chart these two things would be plotted right next to each other now when we did this one column and bar there's only one number but columns are awesome when you have multiple numbers they'll plot right next to each other with the category on the horizontal axis so let's try this let's go up to insert column notice this says clustered column because it means the revenue and expense will be together for each quarter kind of nice that just right there that's an awesome chart but let's do a little um, uh, let's change this a little bit I'm gonna click on these lines delete I'm gonna click on this um, legend control one and I'm gonna say show at top uh, control one notice it said format legend so the trick to the format dialog box for charting is that whatever the item is or chart element it'll always say format whatever the thing is escape now I want to show this one as a line so I'm gonna select not the revenue but the expenses and then right click change chart series type and then show as a line it's gonna change just that one series the expense I don't think I want the the uh, lines with markers I think I'm gonna show uh, this one here just a line these ones right here are when I don't think we're ever gonna use those this this is the one you want to use if you have one or two or three lines the first one and there we go alright so that is two charts in one in essence alright I'm gonna scroll and roll move this over to the side alright so there's uh, four charts we did a pie parts to the uh, compare the parts to the whole the column showing numbers across categories the bar same thing except for maybe emphasizes the difference a little more and finally we can show two, two charts in one and we will do this later in chapter two with histograms and ogive charts over to chart four very important we want to talk about line now we talked about a line here a line is tends to be good to show a trend or changes across categories so we want to talk more about lines I'm going to come over to chart four uh, let's do this one right here again the category is in the left column the numbers are here field names at the top insert line I'm going to select this first one maybe we delete this um, let's delete these lines let's delete this axis here let's go up to layout data labels uh, more is for everything but I think we can pick one here maybe above alright so that's just a nice simple chart I'm gonna point to the edge and click and drag ooh look at that we don't need those uh, extra decimals there I'm gonna click once to select them all control one and lo and behold over on the left there is a number tab just like we saw formatting the cells maybe currency because we want the unit the dollar and then show zero close alright that's kind of a nice simple elegant chart now that's a line there's something very important about a line and it's important in this class because we're gonna do line charts and we're going to do XY scatters line charts one number only meaning category and a number XY scatter which we'll do just in a moment and again everyone in this class has a prerequisite of algebra XY scatters are very important in statistics we have some X variable and then it is in a function that predicts some Y or we have data points where there's an X an independent and a Y a dependent 
xy means two numbers. We're going to plot the relationship between two numbers. All right, and we'll talk about that just in a moment and later in chapter three and or two and fourteen. But what I'm I want to emphasize here, line you never use when you have two numbers when you really want an xy scatter. Line is just for one number. I bring this up. My dad is a, a physicist, been working as a physicist for you know 40 years or something like that, and he phones me up and says, I can't get my xy data to work in a line chart. You know, so it's a very common mistake that people make. And the, the memorization trick is line, one number. XY scatter, two numbers. Now let's see an example of a line chart here where our category is a number. Now this will cause trouble, but no problem, we can fix it. Because really, line chart, this is just an, uh, uh, even though it's a number, we're not doing an XY scatter here. This is a, a category that has an equidistance. We want it on the horizontal axis, and then just simply to plot one number. All right, so I'm going to highlight this uh, data, go up to Insert, Line. Now notice there's two lines here. It's because it, line charts can't have multiple lines for pr like three products across some category. But watch what it does when I click this. It totally misinterprets the data. Year, it thinks we want to plot it. No, and it doesn't put them here. This is an easy fix. Under the design, this is the most important button, and we'll use it many times throughout this class. The real power of charting comes from Select Data button. And the reason why is because we can add series. Remember, series is the word we use for numbers. Edit or remove. And oftentimes, you know, the 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 coolest charts you're making are in cool is a metaphor for or a euphemism for difficult. But sometimes the difficult charts, the charting engine just doesn't can't figure it out. So you have to come here and make it from scratch. This is an example. So we're going to click on year. Click Remove. Also, it didn't interpret this uh, axis down here right. So this is category, also known as the, the horizontal axis. I'm going to click Edit. It's asking where they are now. Uh-oh, I totally messed up. This chart is in front of the data. You really should have slid it to the side, which you can do if you want. But I'm going to do a super cool trick here. I'm going to click in that cell because I can see the blue. I know that's the label. I'm going to hit down arrow. I know that their first number is there. And remember, a couple of videos ago, we learned Control Shift Down Arrow. It goes to the bottom. That's how we select a column of data. So that's pretty tricky. Actually, it would have been much smarter to just slide it out of the way before we invoke this dialog box. But there you go. Click OK. And there it is. You can see the preview right there. Click OK. Absolutely cool. Let's uh, delete this. I'm going to click on this. Actually, let's make it a little bit smaller. That's OK, but I'm going to click here, Control-1. Now, notice when I Control-1, I don't see the font option. I absolutely have no idea why the people at Microsoft, everything is editable in the format dialog box except for font. So you have to right click uh, and point to font. That's why oftentimes I just use the home ribbon or something. But let's right click font. I'm going to change the size here to 7. I'm going to come down here, right click font. I almost control 1 there, so used to it, and change it to 7. All right, so that's an example of a line where it missing the chart wizard misinterpreted it, but we use the select data. OK, we have one more. Uh, actually, later in chapter two, we'll see how to add multiple lines. All right, one last chart, xy scatter. Always use xy scatter when you're plotting the relationship between two numbers. The x is on the vertical, the horizontal, I mean, and the y is on the vertical. We have, you always put your x to the left so that it interprets it correctly. I have a label at the top, um, a label here. Notice this is our x. We're thinking this will predict 
what the y is. So hours spent studying per week for one statistics class, 7, 20, 13, 9. And then here are the scores. So let's plot this and see if there's a relationship. Now, we could use our, our, our selection cursor to select. We also learned earlier in the class, if you highlight something like this, you can use Control Shift Down Arrow. And for big data sets, that's important. But there's another keyboard shortcut. And I don't think I wrote this in the notes anywhere. It's for selecting the whole table. It is Control plus asterisk. Now, the asterisk on the number pad. If you're going to use the asterisk above the number 8, it's Control shift 8. So oftentimes, and we'll have data sets in this class, it's Control asterisk, and boom, it's selected. Remember, it's still the same rule, blanks all the way around. Insert, scatter. And this is a, a set of collected data. You always want to use the scatter, not these lines, but the scatter for collected data. It means we went out and we got, we got these are samples, a sample we took of uh, students, right? Uh, in some cases, if you have a function and you're predicting a straight line, like in break even analysis and accounting, or or finance or whatever you do, you, you use a line. But when you're, you have collected data, it's scatter mar with markers only that you want. And there's our chart. Now, very important, let's delete that. It's useless. I also want to link this title here to that cell right there. Now, notice it's by default, we saw this earlier, it takes the um, column to the right field name and puts it as a title, but I don't want that. I want it linked there. So watch this. We saw how earlier we can come up here and type something, but we can also make a formula. So you click up in the formula bar. Make sure, by the way, that the, the title does not have the dashed lines. Dashed lines means you can highlight and click. Make sure it's got a solid line. Click, formula bar, equal sign, Click on the cell. You can see it puts the sheet name and the cell address. Hit Enter. Now immediately, I want to change the font. Another way to change the font is you can right click. Oh, look at that. It actually has something called the mini toolbar. If you click up here, I'm going to say maybe 12. Much better. Now with XY, absolutely have to label. I have no idea what these are. Now, you could sort of maybe get it, but forget it. We want to be explicit. We want this chart to deliver a message to whoever's reading it. So this one needs to be uh, hours spent studying. So I go up to Layout, Axis, Horizontal, Title Below, Hours spent studying. I hope I spelled that right. Axis, vertical, one of them either rotated or vertical. No, let's try rotated. And I'm going to click up here and type test scores. All right, so there is an XY. We'll do a, uh, I actually will show you one other thing here. Um, and we'll talk about this in great length in chapter 14. But this is an XY scatter. And in chapter 14, we'll learn how to do uh, linear regression, least square method, and all that to estimate a line that we then use as a model to predict. In a chart, it's so easy. You right click, add trend line. Now, linear, we're assuming it's linear. You can even come down here and show the equation and r squared. We'll actually do all the beautiful math in chapter 14 for the equation and r squared and talk about what it is. But there it is. Now that's pretty amazing. Now I'm actually going to click on these lines and delete. And I'm going to drag this down here just like that. Absolutely amazing. So that's an xy scatter. Now the rule of thumb for xy scattered is what? two numbers, plotting the relationship between two numbers. 
uh, for a line chart, it's one number plotted on the vertical axis and a category. We come back over here, we have two charts in one. Column, there's a category we're comparing numbers. Pi, parts to the whole. Bar is similar to column, except for we can uh, see differences more forcefully. Now, that was a summary I shouldn't have summarized in this video, because I did want to show you one last thing. If we come over to pivot table 3, answer, this is what we did in our last video. Pivot tables are awesome because they are the means often to summarize most efficiently. If you want a chart, let's say we want a column chart, you simply select the pivot table, column. Now check this out. I'm actually going to control 1 and change the fill to that little vary. But the amazing thing about pivot tables is there's you can filter it. You could come up here and say, Ch -ch -ch -ch, and it will show you just those ones. Not only that, but if you pivot it, it will uh, pivot the the pivot this. The chart will change. So totally linked. One last uh, example of pivot table. If you click here and do column, remember here we have two categories, so we'll see multiple columns absolutely amazing. So again, the same thing is here. You can come here and sort. Actually, it was already sorted. It sorts the labels. <laughs> Look at that. You can uh, filter. So totally amazing. We'll do uh, much more with that later. But notice, what was it? it once we created the pivot table, it was a uh, one click. All right, that's a lot about charts. We'll see you next video.